for the first 10 years and immediately for this year, we're seeking to harness the demographic dividend. You know, Africa has the highest number of young people and um, they tend to be frustrated. They tend to want to cross the Sahara. You get tempted to sail in unsafe boats, to try to get to Europe for looking for an El Dorado, which is non-existent. Now, we believe that to be able to harness the demographic dividends, we need to educate our people, train them. Um, basically, we would like to have every African child in school, get them proper cultural, technical, vocational training. And uh, we believe that if they're able to do that, they become potential businessmen, employers, creators of jobs and creators of value. So basically, we want to have all the young people educated and trained. We believe that trained, educated young people become capital, able to absorb capital, able to be utilized for processing. It will allow European factories, European companies to bring their excess capacity here. And because the labor will be cheaper, you will be able to produce at a cheaper rate and to be a win-win situation for everybody. I believe that um, it is in the interest of the G20 to help create an Africa that is literate and numerate and able to add value and process. Now, process actually means science and technology applied to production. You can only do that with an educated, numerate and literate workforce. If we are able to do that, it will be, it will be profitable for the G20 because it will be a source of trained labor able to utilize European capital and technology to be able to produce and probably outproduce its rivals. Europe and Africa being the closest neighbors, distance will be economized, will be an economy. And in the world where you find some great powers now talking about America first, if Europe is able to help Africa to integrate and expand its market within and also to produce and uh, have an educated population, the relation between Europe and Africa will become one of productive advantage for both sides. I think it's to Europe's advantage to help Africa achieve that. You can recall that the division of Africa, the partition of Africa, occurred in Berlin, 1884-85. In that respect, we're looking forward to reading the proceedings of that meeting. Because it's from those proceedings that we begin to know exactly how the partition and disintegration of Africa was initiated. And through that, getting to know the causes, we can begin to find the solutions that are integrated, educated, and united Africa. So these are the steps we hope that Europe and Africa can do together. You know, ideas start from one person talking to another. Ideas colliding, developing. And in this meeting, the think tanks have identified the problems at their source. And because we have been able to identify the problem, we can now begin to fashion the solutions. And the solutions are an educated, literate, and numerate Africa, able to absorb capital and technology to produce raised living standards, develop a culture of peace, a culture of happiness, a culture of uh, learning, the better to help push both Europe and Africa forward in the 21st century.